Hi, this is Chloe from Inner Whispers, and today I'm unboxing the Tarot Decoratif from Chiro Marchetti. I'm a big fan of Chiro's work, and so when I heard that he was doing a Marseille style deck, I was very interested because I have to say that for the most part I don't read much with Marseille style decks, even though I do like uh, non scenic pips, because so many of them are just so ugly. I really don't like them. One big exception to that is the Isis Marseille, uh, but when I heard that there was going to be a Chiro Marseille, then I just had to give it a try. So let's dive on in. It comes in this very big box and uh, it's quite simple. Ooh, gold paper. Ah, wow, okay. And I hadn't realised that. There's a bag inside, um, beautiful bag with the suit emblems on it, very nice feel to it and on this side the same image that was on the box as well and inside that here we have the cards, they are big, they're sort of, yeah, they're just about holdable but you can't, I can't hold the whole pack. Um, so let's go through them. Here's the title card, signed one, and the titles are all in French, very traditional, but already you see the kind of depth of colour and the playfulness of them, with the Fool, Le Bateleur, La Papesse, the High Priestess, L'imperatrice. So, oh, and uh, it's lovely, even though you've still got these quite blocky colours, blue and red with yellow, so very traditional in that regard, they're so beautifully done, the fall of the material, it feels really sumptuous. Um, likewise here once again, you know, he's all in blue, so it's a lot the traditional, just straight up blue, red and yellow of the Marseille decks but done in a very attractive form. I really am liking the kind of stained glass window effect behind them. Um, uh, the Lovers, L'Amoureux, the Chariot, and there's something... Hmm. Wow, the horses there are absolutely fabulous. La Justice. There's something about the faces that feels different to me to his other decks. They feel, I don't know, can't put my finger on it currently. La Roue de, la, de Fortune, La Farce, absolutely lovely. I'm really enjoying these images. Um, this is nice, a kind of thorny tree that he's hanging from. Still, you know, the pointed toes, it has slight aspects of his previous work. And, uh, you know, death with no title, which was very traditional. Nicely done. The skull, the scythe, and the little growing plants there. Temperance. <laughs> A much less sexy devil than some of his past ones, but that fits well with... Marseille tradition, uh, La Maison Dieu, the House of God, our oh, beautiful star, and I like the horses were similar to this, and and now the dogs they have this kind of thin elegance to them, and they look almost metallic. I mean they're silver and gold, but they really do have a metallic aspect to them. So the ugly kids in Le Soleil are still kind of... <laughs> what can you say? Le Jugement and Le Monde. Here we have the Ace and we do have a little dragon which is one of Chiro's kind of signature pieces. Two of Wands. So we've got the two and then we do have 
a view in between to so it's not totally a non-illustrated pip and yet the suit elements the suit emblems do dominate the card shall we say so in that sense it almost has a touch of the rider weight thrown in for those that maybe feel the need but it does have the more non-scenic pips as a dominating feature um, yeah that's the case with all of these so a sort of hint of rider weight um, yeah it's interesting it does give you other options but you know the non-scenic part is still the most powerful bit here so it's almost like a, a cheat sheet or reminder um, Though obviously the Terre de Marseille is often read quite differently its pips than the Rider Waite would be. So some people may not like that because of that, that it's interfering with them and the either learnt or just visually inspired um, meanings that they would get from these non-scenic pips. Um. Valet de Baton, the Page of Wands, and the Knight. Oh, I love her dress. I mean, that's not at all traditional, it has to be said, but isn't it gorgeous? Uh, quite something. And the King of Wands. Ace of Pentacles. Uh, the signature two of pentacles card with the maker's sign on it. Ah, that one seems like it's almost taken directly from one of his other decks. Five of pentacles, six of pentacles, interesting. I like that the faces change on the coins in each one as well. So yes, it seems like he's kind of taken aspects from some of his other decks. Here, just the hooded hawk to add in. These are definitely the faces from other decks. This valet de denier. Has a quite cheeky look to him. And the knight is sort of disappearing off into the undergrowth. Mm. Lovely Queen of Pentacles. These feel stronger, more real characters in some ways. They're less pretty, perhaps, than some, uh, which actually works rather nicely. This is a gorgeous image. Um, so, if you are just sort of wanting to get introduced to Tarot de Marseille, this in many ways is a good starter deck, except having the Rider Waite does mean that you're more likely to stick with your tried and true meanings, rather than necessarily going all out and changing up to the Terre de Marseille style of reading. Um, that's a, a personal choice, I guess. Uh, but they are lovely. There's a, a commonality to each suit. So here the kind of blues and purples in the pentacles, the greens. That means it'll be very easy to spot them in a larger spread. Um, and yet it's still quite subtle, I would say. So, very nicely done. Oh, she is fabulous. Love the Queen of Swords. Very self-contained, very beautiful, very blue. <laughs> and uh, the King of Swords. And now we come to the cups. Chalices. Oop. So some of these faces are not ones that I recognise, whereas a lot of them are. Um, here 
interesting sort of orange and slightly yellow as the overall card theme, suit theme perhaps for colours. And these are, yeah, seem new faces to me. Seven of Cups with a Dream Palace. So, yes, they are very attractive. I find them very attractive anyway. Uh, very nicely done. <laughs> Some of the costumes are really quite outrageous. Oh, wow, that's another fabulous one. The queens really do get some excellent costumes in this deck. And finally, oh, a very interesting King of Cups. His clothes, very elegant, and yet, yes, there's something there that he is in black underneath. Heart of Darkness, or black and white emotions. Very interesting. So let's have a look at the deck as a whole, how it shuffles and feels. As I've said already, the cardstock is fairly thick, the backs are fully reversible. Um, so you can't hold, I can't hold the deck in one hand, it will sort of drop out. Uh, but let's give it a riffle, see how that goes. So it riffles pretty well, um, and for hand over hand, we can do it this way. There's, they're not over slippy. Um, if anything, I'd almost not mind them a little bit slippier, but they're not bad. I'm not hugely keen on such thick cardstock. Some people I know like it because they feel it It sort of seems more durable. Um, I've got quite a lot of decks that are far thinner than that and have lasted me well over a decade, so... But yes, they do shuffle fine. Um, yes. And a first little draw. We have three of pentacles, a craftsman working on his craft. That's certainly something that Chiro has done over the years. And uh, I guess with this, it sort of says, get to work on your tarot de masse meanings. Learning something new is, I think, one of the reasons why lots of people are moving into tarot de masse at the moment, to have a new challenge, a new way of applying their cartomantic craft. Blessed be.